Hey guys, this is the Erin in Wonderland podcast. I'm Erin. I'm Joseph. Today we're talking about Chuck Elderberry. Elderberry? Um, which like should be pretty pie? interesting. Not like the pie. <sighs> um, That's disappointing. So, yeah. Can we maybe so get pie after Make this? sure you subscribe. Some yeah, there's actually pie? pie upstairs. There's key lime pie upstairs. Oh, it's not elderberry pie? No. Mm. Chuck elderberry. I think Charles. I think Chuck is short for Charles, but we'll get there. Charles. So make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron in Wonderland. Help the podcast by joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash Aaron in Wonderland. Even if you can't become a monthly subscriber, just like a little bit will help for us to do more giveaways, um, be able to cover more things, be able to do this more on like a full-time basis. If we get to 5,000, though, you'll see my talents. Subscribers. <laughs> Keep on I was re-watching that video, and I don't know how we ended up on six hot dogs. Because, like, I agreed on eight, and then somehow it you finagled it, and we, I ended up typing six. Tell you the truth, I, you're going to be lucky if I get one. I don't think you should do it at all. <laughs> like, I can feel, like, my heart is, like, exploding thinking about it. Well, maybe we'll do another challenge. Maybe that, that uh, what? Josh Hollins ended up talking about the ghost pepper challenge. I'll eat a, oh, I'll yeah. eat a ghost pepper. Oh, yeah. Oh, so at five, what is it, 5,000 subscribers? Joey agreed to do the hot dog challenge, which is swallowing <laughs> hot dogs whole on camera. He agreed to six hot dogs. So we'll see how that goes. No buns. No buns. Sans buns. He might even dip them in water or some Mountain Dew for some good lube. I'm coming for you, Joey Chestnut. I'm going to be the new American hero out here. (laughs) (laughs) We'll call him Joey Hot Dogs. (laughs) So, today we're talking about Chuck Elderberry. They'll call me Joey No Bites, (laughs) because I just... (laughs) I'm trying to think of, like, a... That's perfect. Joey No Bites. I don't even chew the hot dogs. Just right down the gullet. (laughs) Joey the Gobbler. So many. What am I, a turkey? You calling me a turkey? Prismo. Look at Prismo. (laughs) <laughs> look at look at Frisbee. Chuck I Elderberry. I bet he could gobble some Vienna. Sausage. I bet Chuck Elderberry could gobble some Vienna so sausage. So we are going to talk about. We've been mentioning Chuck Elderberry for the past few podcasts, and I just feel like it's time to talk about him. So Chuck Elderberry was born in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which we're from Pennsylvania originally. Um, he was his family was Amish, but I don't know if you know this about Amish people. But when they're like teenagers, they get to go like experience the world and see if they want to be Amish. It's called a rum springer. That's what it's called. So he went on his rum springer and he never came back. Like he just decided like, I, this Amish life is not for me. So he ended up becoming a traveling musician. I don't know if I mentioned this, but he was born. What are you looking up? I was looking up. Did you I'll see blow. what it said? I I don't know. I'm confused by that. So, he was actually born... Um, was he Amish? Well, he was Amish, but then on his rumspringa, he decided to not come home because he discovered the joy of music. So, mm. and the thing that made him discover the joy of music is Chuck Mangione. Um, I was going to say, was he loved, a Chuck Mangione He absolutely Mangione loved fan? jazz. What? Mm, I would say, was he a Chuck Mangione oh, fan? Oh, big well time. I, I mean, if you're not... Do, if you don't even know who he is, yeah. then... <sighs> So and don't even subscribe to us. Just unsubscribe. <laughs> it feels so good. So yeah, so he was a very big Chuck Mangione fan, and he rather than you know playing the saxophone because he felt like that was like a played out um, jazz instrument, he decided to go for the tuba, which a lot of people don't know, but um, you can you can you know make some pretty jam and jazz with didn't, the tuba walk the bass line you can do a lot of stuff didn't he also like play the trombone a little bit too yeah he actually played a lot he played the triangle um xylophone i heard, I heard he spoons. i heard he rocked a mean maraca oh a washboard <laughs> that maraca yeah banjo he was there's he was very talented but mainly he, was, he focused on the tuba he was and like his trick his main trick on stage was like he had a pet cat that he would take with him everywhere and the cat would be like in the tuba and then he'd be like Moo! and the and cat, the cat would like pop, pop out. out it was like a whole thing he was basically like a one-man band himself huh he was he, he was actually he invented the like contraption the one-man band thing because he was so into like all of the <laughs> all of the um the instruments mm-hmm. he created like the backpack with like the cymbal that claps and like the drum 
Um, didn't, so he was really an innovator. Didn't he learn how to do all this? Because his dad was like, you'll never know how to do all that musical stuff. Yeah, no. So Because the Amish. Yeah. So his Amish father was, he always, from a young age, looked down on Chuck, Charles Elderberry, because it wasn't Chuck's fault. From the time he was young, he could grow like a really thick mustache. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know about the Amish, but they, they're like, okay, you can grow a beard, no mustache. It's like a religious thing. So, well, well, no, they they grow it when they're when they're married. Oh, the mustache? The mustache is no. Never they there. shave the must. They grow the beard, but they shave the mustache when they're married. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. It's like one of the. They keep the full beard, but they, have to they look shave into this. The but there was some there was some issue with his dad not enjoying his mustache or his facial hair. He felt like he didn't have respect, you know. So he was just Wasn't like, too- oh, Chuck. And he he spoke with that thick Pennsylvania Dutch accent uh, where he would be like, oh, Chuck, you'll never make it in the music world. Top of the morning to you, Chuck. Is he Irish? So, I think that's like an Irish accent, Aaron. But then he also, too, like he got like real involved with like playing the spoons at first because that's like the only real thing they had. And at the dinner table, he was like, don't you be doing that here. Yes. So that's the Dutch that's accent. Exactly. Don't you be doing that here. You hear me, young lad? I, I'm amazed that you're so well versed on chuck elderberry so i know like i i did a little bit i was looking up a little bit of yeah no look at his wikipedia up. page so that is true he initially was just like playing things he found around the house like spoons and he once made a, a guitar out of a table leg um which was like so redneck <laughs> right you can't get any more redneck than that <laughs> um and then, so then, you know, Chuck Elderberry, he lived in Pennsylvania, and then he eventually became a roadie, because as he got older, you know, he wasn't really? making it really in... Um, Who was he a roadie for? Was it like a couple of different bands, or was it just like... It one? was for Cher. It's for Cher? Yeah, he was a roadie for Cher. And this, this was... This, this was, was... Wait, this was prior to Sonny hitting it the was, tree. It was. It was. That joke. Oh, it had to be. You were right there with Chuck me Chuck Elderberry is like an old man. So, yeah, it was before, you know, Sonny Bono died. But there are rumors that Chuck Elderberry is actually the father of Chaz Bono, who no recently way. transitioned. Yeah, I don't know if you know, like, about Chaz Bono. You can, like, Google that. Um, I know who Chaz Bono is, but I just didn't know that. Oh, no, I'm talking about, like, about our followers. Like, they can check that out. So, yeah, so, um, but Chuck Elderberry, oh, and he was actually knighted at one point in time. Um... Mm, got him. He was actually knighted by the Queen of England um, at the same time that Sir Elton John was knighted. What was he so knighted it's for? Sir for the, Chuck for Elderberry. Music? For bringing like jazz into... So he actually, he wrote so many good jazz songs that it, it united the people. And he actually went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize for creating such unity across the world. Like, the world had never experienced such a united time as when Chuck Elderberry Did, played his tuba with the cat joke. Like, I, God, I everyone it, like, loved like, it. Like, even if you're having a bad day, that's got to cheer you up. I know. So, anyways, he wins the Nobel Prize. He gets Did, knighted. He lives this, like, crazy life. But then, you know, like all shining stars. Tragedy struck. Tragedy does strike. And what, the arthritis started kicking in and he just couldn't play anymore? Well... Or is it just like old age, like he wasn't... You can't technically die of old age. So I guess, you know, you know a lot about Chuck Elderberry, but it's a real mystery. What What do you mean you can't technically die of old age? That's not a... We'll talk about that later. Okay. It's not a medical cause of death. So, <coughs> um, maybe we can talk about that now. That's not a, old age is not a medical cause of death. But <laughs> how you wake up then? How you gonna wake up dead? <laughs> so Chuck Elderberry unfortunately never got to be an Elderberry himself. He didn't Rob Lowe play like a in a movie or like a yeah, small role. Rob him? Lowe is in the made for TV movie about Chuck Elderberry's life, in which he plays Chuck Elderberry's neighbor's best friend. Um, it's kind of like not directly about Chuck Elderberry, obviously, because he's, like, kind of, like, a loose part of the story. But, um, so, what happens with Chuck Elderberry? Everyone's wondering. Everybody wants to know. What happened to Chuck Elderberry? And it's not, it's not glamorous. So. Just tell him that he, he pissed away all his money and drugs and booze and hookers. He wasn't the nicest guy as everyone thought. No, 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 no. Is that no. what it was? 
No? I'm Chuck Elderberry. Like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you do? Hello, my Valentine. <laughs> 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 it's sad. Um, because. <sighs> I really don't know what happened to Chuck Elderberry. You don't? Uh-uh. I didn't get that far. I only just know that he was like well, a real good musician. The one thing that all Chuck Elderberry fans know about him is that he absolutely loved toaster strudels. Like, loved them. To the point where, like, he would take, like, like if you were anywhere, he would be like, let's find the toaster strudels. Like, like that was, like, his number one thing. And he always had to have a toaster in, like, his room or his dressing room. But he also had to have a jacuzzi tub wherever he was staying. So, I think you guys can infer one thing led to another. Chuck Elderberry. He burned toaster strudel. And died I on wish. the toilet like Elvis. I w- <laughs> he died of a bowel obstruction from eating too many toaster strudels. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm trying to make light of it because it's actually very sad. Because for a long time, it was. it's still disputed to this day. It's almost like um, Courtney Love and that guy from Nirvana. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt Cobain. I was just bag. kidding. I was literally you mean kidding. Kurt Cobain? But it's almost like that because people theorize that his ex-wife, Cindy Elderberry, had a hand in what happened. So he was found in his jacuzzi Cindy tub. Cindy Berry? Cindy Elderberry? Yeah. That's his ex-wife. His ex-wife? Cindy Elderberry. They got divorced. She kept his last name, though, because he was the famous one. So... They they That's ended up name. getting divorced, and she just happened to be in the same town as him. Like that night, he, she happened to be staying um, in Las Vegas because he was there performing um, with Chuck Mangione, actually. And mm. um, so, anyways, he's found in in the jacuzzi tub of his uh, hotel, which he was in Las Vegas, but he was staying at the Motel Six. So, I mean. You need to check out he the was a penny pincher. No wonder he had much, so much Yeah, money. he wasn't doing too well towards the end. But um, so <laughs> when when well. the police found him, because the <laughs> he was staying in a hotel that you paid by the hour. <laughs> Joe, we're talking about Chuck Elderberry oh dying now. You have to be serious. Jesus. I mean, he didn't people. die the most respectful way. <laughs> so what happened was the um, the housekeeping tried to get in, but they couldn't get in because the hotel lock. So then. Um, did he at least get the toaster strudel? No, the toaster strudel was actually <laughs> oh, floating nearby. Man. Um, and it was hard for the police to determine what was toaster strudel what little flavor jelly was? and what was blood. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it must have been a cherry one or strawberry. It could have been elderberry. Now, elderberry is a dark berry. So he didn't get to enjoy his toaster strudel but the theories out there are that cindy elderberry had like a hand in it because um they were like oh he had too many too many toasters in his system to be able to handle (laughs) to be able to work a a toaster functionally people think that she did it is the point and i'm pretty sure they were like he had so many toaster strudels in his system that he would have gone into diabetic shock (laughs) Before, you know, um, before he would have been able to life. even get into the tub. And it was a tragic place. accident is my point. So be careful with toasters and toaster strudels and let this be a lesson because actually what happened was he got electrocuted, but that didn't kill him. He got out of the tub and he's like soaking wet and he actually ended up dying like Edgar Allan Poe drunk in a gutter. Really? Crow the Raven. I thought Never he died. More. I thought he died in the tub, so he died. Huh. He got out of the tub. Yeah, and survived. That's my point though. So when So what they thought he was just drunk? When the the maids came there, they couldn't get in the room, and then they they heard like this like noise like coming from like behind them. And they turn and look and they're like, Ew, there's something in the gutter and they like stomped it and then they killed him. So they literally turned him into elderberries? Yeah. They squashed him like an elderberry. But then they were like, oh my God, that's Chuck Elderberry. And then they realized the error of their ways and tried to cover it up. And that's a whole other story. We'll probably do a podcast on the murder of Chuck Elderberry and the um, subsequent prosecution of the house. Um, of how they thought the he was really Jack the Ripper. Oh, I wish that was true. The housekeeper's. Um, it's a real Casey Anthony situation there. Dun, but, dun, dun. 
Yeah, so Chuck dun, dun, Elderberry dun. lived and died um, a good life. You know, he was knighted. He Sir. He never had syphilis. Sir Charles and I know that. Elderberry. <laughs> Sir Charles Elderberry, if he was knighted. Chucky! Or as we know him, Chuck. Uncle Chuck. Uncle so, Buck. So, again, guys, thanks for listening. This is the Aaron in Wonderland podcast. Check us out on YouTube. That's YouTube. Aaron. YouTube.com slash Aaron and That's Joe. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Aaron Wonderland. Become a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Aaron Wonderland. Let us know what else you'd like to see. And remember to always stay weird. That's the truth that's out there. Pow, pow.